Yo, what is up guys? It's the Goblin and welcome back to another Call of Duty Modern Warfare video. In tonight's video, we're going to be covering everything you need to know about how to quickscope in Modern Warfare, the best sniper to use for quickscoping and getting kill feeds, the best sniper class setup, and also what game modes and maps work very well for sniping in this game because sniping has always been a very, very important part of Call of Duty, but especially in a game like this where honestly, it's very, very strong because of the map design and the different game modes where we're opening up to 10v10s and 32 v 30 Twos. Anyway, if you could drop a like on this video, let's go ahead and go for 892 likes. This is a very, very in-depth video for sniping, so I'd very much appreciate if you could drop a like on this video. It did take some time to make. Also, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. Huge shout out to everyone new subscribe and everyone hitting that like button. I know it takes half a second, but I really, really, really do appreciate the support. Also, today's video, because you guys know me, I consider myself a decent player with ray guns, but as far as sniping, I'm not the best sniper. I, I don't really snipe too often. I'm more of a try-hard player when I get on the game. So so for today's video, I have a special guest interview with Sore Arkin, who is a part of Sore Gaming, which is a famous Call of Duty sniping team, and he was actually widely regarded as one of the top snipers in Call of Duty Black Ops 4. I was watching this guy's streams, he would hit insane, like, five-man feeds, four-man headshot feeds, just a bunch of insane stuff, and he's doing really well in Modern Warfare as well, so I thought he would be the perfect guy to interview and get some real, get into the real in-depth stuff on how to get better with snipers. Uh, if you guys want to, check out his channel, I think he uploads some of the best sniping content on YouTube during Black Ops 4, and I'm sure he's going to keep keep it up during Modern Warfare. So the link for that will be down in the description. I highly recommend if you guys are into sniping at all, want to see someone that really is good and has practiced sniping for like a decade, check him out and subscribe to him with the link in the description. But let's go ahead and get into this. I, this is a longer video. It's like 28 minutes, but we cover everything you need to know. And like I said, it took a, a decent amount of work, so I'd appreciate some support on this. Enjoy, and I'll catch you later. I got some questions for you today. We'll do it sort of more interview style. Now, obviously myself, I, I consider myself a decent player, but I stick to more SMGs and assault rifles. And that's why I had to, you know, I had to call a friend or phone in the expert for today's video. So we're going to start with this guy definitely is knowledgeable about sniping. And I want to ask you, as far as this game with quick scoping, just off the top, how does it feel in this game? Is it comparable to any other Call of Duties? And also, would you think that this is a game where it's more of a drag scoping, where you might be playing on a higher sensitivity, scoping beside a player, right beside them, dragging over to the right, or a quick sudden movement? to the left to pick them off or more of a dark scoping or black scoping game where essentially you have your crosshairs lined up it's a quick little zoom in and a quick little pop like that what do you think and uh, which games are the most comparable to honestly this game is it's a little wonky but if you got the right attachments and class setups uh, you can definitely center them and uh, and a black scope but most comparable call of duty would probably be ghost a little awkward you know there was uh, the thing where they took out the black around the scope when you're hard scoping in uh, so you can it's clear around the player so it made everything a little different but um i definitely think that drag scoping is huge in this game but um once you add the attachments and stuff like that quick scoping is so easy yeah, so I see what you're saying. It, dra but it seems like both are effective in this game, but of course the ADS speed on the weapons is so manipulated, like you can manipulate it so well with the, with uh, attachments that once you have your a sniper leveled up and you have those things where you're ADSing really quick, you can sort of set up with the crosshairs and do more of a black scoping sort of setup. So when it comes down to someone who may not have been sniping for the past decade across all Call of Duty games like yourself, may not be in a sniping team, what would you recommend... A player like myself, who is a good Call of Duty player, but wants to uh, focus on quick scoping or get better at sniping in this game because of some of the maps. What are some things that are directly easy to focus on? Should we be playing on a higher sensitivity? And what should you be looking for on some sort of beginner or mid-level tips for quick scoping? Definitely for beginners, you're going to want to be playing a lot of bots. I spent hours, if not weeks, playing bots when I first started off sniping. And it's just one of those essential things you got to do to get better if you want to be good at sniping. Because um, right when you start off, it, everything's going to be difficult. You're going to want to play like you're using like an assault rifle or something, and none of it's going to make sense. But uh, if you start off with bots, start messing around with your sensitivity, maybe try a little higher up the high zoom sense, because in this game there's a high zoom sense and a low zoom sense, and the high zoom, high zoom sense messes with like the sniper scopes and stuff like that. So go play on bots for a couple hours a day, maybe if you just want to warm up to it. And then maybe start off with like some easier game modes like TDM, or something like that where the players maybe won't be as crazy because this game the time to kill is very fast so by adding like attachments and stuff like that because attachments in this game are huge the ads time to say the ax50 is like half a second and when you add the attachments it makes it like 0.1 second so it makes everything so much easier so for basic quick scoping um 
the AX50 is probably your go-to gun. So like you said, talking about these sensitivities, that's very interesting to me because personally, I play on a six and a six sensitivity. It goes up from zero to 20 in this game. In older Call of Duties, it went up to 10, it went up to 14. They always seem to mix that up or uh, change it up. This one goes up to 20. I play on a six and a six. And as far as that high zoom sensitivity, I think that is a major, major key. And one that, like you said, practicing in combat training until you get comfortable with it is gonna be the way to get better at quick scoping the fastest. Setting up those bots in combat training and experimenting with different attachments, with different scope speeds until you get that timing down is definitely the way in this game. It's it's amazing how there's so many different timing levels in this game because of how the attachments work. It's not just like a game like MW2 where it's, okay, are you marathon sniping or are you sleight of hand pro sniping? It's a little bit more complicated to that. So when we talk about sensitivity, like I said, me being on a six, what do you use as a sniper and what do you use for that high zoom sensitivity also? My go-to sense is probably 12-12. But it can vary just, appeal, uh, just depending on the shot because like maybe I'll wake up one day and my thumbs won't be working as well. So I might mess around with it. Like I said, it's really just however you're feeling. But try to stick to one sensitivity. So mine's probably going to be 12-12. And then I'll mess with the high zoom and, high zoom and make that 1.25. Just because in this game, the, the high zoom, it's kind of weird. If you leave it on one times uh, when you're aiming in the scope, it'll be a little slow. Like it won't match your sensitivity. Like if I'm on 12, maybe in scope, it feels like four or something like that. So I'll put it on a 1.25 and uh, it'll make it feel a little faster in scope. Yeah, that, that totally makes sense to me, especially going with the fact that like you said, that's made for, traditionally players are going to want that to be slowing down if you're trying to aim down sights at a long range with like some uh, AR with ACOG. But if we're talking about quick scoping and more specifically drag scoping, which I think is definitely affected by that sensitivity as you're zoomed in, uh, I can see why it's completely opposite for a reg gun gunners compared to a sniper who would actually want it to speed up. It sounds funny, but it actually does help with those uh, drag scoping and snapping on targets, which you almost have to do in this game because the time to kill is pretty much instant even with assault rifles not just with sniper rifles if you know what i'm saying next let's go ahead and get right into the class setups that we use first of all there's three different sniper rifles might as well just go ahead and get your thoughts on each of them now the ax50 is uh, i'm seeing most people loving that one the most of course it has the bolt action with 50 cal ammo the other one is the hdr bolt action that one whenever i look at it it reminds me of sort of snipers from world war ii i'm not sure why just the look of it when the ax50 reminds me more of snipers from ghosts and then of course we have the dragon of which has been around in call of duty for a long time and it's sort of i don't know if it's ever been a really really loved weapon in call of duty it's sort of always just been there certain people gravitate towards it other people just completely ignore it that is a semi-automatic uh, sniper rifle now in terms of these three sniper rifles what are you going to expect in terms of hit markers on each of them and in terms of scope speeds if we're talking about the hdr and the ax50 you're not going to be getting <laughs> just about any hit markers maybe a little low on the ax50 you'll get a hit marker but the hdr is pretty much one shot the dragon off um unlike call the last call of duties it's been a hit marker machine but in this one if you up the damage a little bit the the, the bullet velocity i think it's called and the attachments uh it one shots pretty decently to the chest i'd say like ballista from bo2 strength Okay, so as far as your favorite sniper rifle, though, it is still with the AX-50, and that is the one that is probably the easiest to hit uh, feeds with or quick scoping. Would you say that? Yeah, I'd say the AX-50 is definitely the best for hitting like feeds and stuff like that just because it shoots the fastest and it does the best damage. But if you're going for like quick kills on like a ground war map or something like that where you're just trying to pick people off, super quick, the Dragonov is super effective, but maybe you just hit hit markers, HDRs for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, I see. So Dragonov, of course, semi-automatic, picking off people where you might be taking on multiple enemies, which will happen way more in Ground War, but that doesn't look as clean or cool for the clips, which is sort of the reason to quickscope is to have fun and usually, you know, show off a little bit. Hey, look at me. I'm using a sniper. I can hit these clips, and it's definitely a learned skill where it's not something that you can just pick up and get good at automatically. Stuff that you have been practicing in Black Ops 4 and even way back when you started playing and Call of Duty back in Call of Duty 4 or other games like that still has an effect today with your sniping skills. I mean, you can click on one of your streams, watch it for just a second and see, oh, 
Obviously, this guy is a sniper. He knows what he's doing. It's more of a natural thing that it comes to you because of the amount of time you've trained into it. It's just second nature and muscle memory. And that's what I hope some of these tips that will help you guys out from earlier in this video talking about quick scoping, drag scoping, and black scoping. Now, as far as we got the AX50 for your favorite sniper rifle. Now, with with me, I'm more of a rig gunner. Uh, you know, I might pull out that M4 with extended mag, 60 bullets. I'm not really touching the secondaries because I'm melting people with that. But if you're a sniper, of course, whether you, you shoot and miss, you're stuck in that uh, cocking action of the weapon where the, with the bolt sniper, or you're just out of ammo, or you're just running into a building and want to go close range instead of going for that lucky no scope, what would you say as far as a secondary? I know this game has like a deagle, which is very, very popular and probably the best pistol for most people, but that is unlocked way, way later. So is there any pistols that you would un recommend to people when they're leveling up through those levels to help sort of balance out the fact that snipers are great at long range, but sometimes you might get caught at close range. Which pistol would you say is most reliable other than that deagle for people that are lower levels? Well, first thing I'd say to that is it's really different with this game because of how the, the scopes work. They're so like big that like close range shots are actually not that hard with the aim assist. Like it just feels so much more different than this game compared to other games. Like close range shots are not as hard as other Call of Duties. And I, I know other people can attest to that. But uh, if you try doing that, you're fine. But the best pistol, regardless, like if you're out of ammo or something, would probably be uh, the revolver, the .357. Um, that puppy, one shots to the head, it's, it's nice and solid. That's what I go with. Okay, so that's sort of like a magnum sort of pistol, I believe. The .357 um, revolver, like you said, and then up to the Deagle if you have that. So you would go with the AX50, that is your secondary. Now when it comes down to the class setup, this is very, very important in this game, probably more than ever in sniping game, or in Call of Duty history for snipers, because if you, you literally have pros and cons to each of the attachments, and I think this is sort of a controversial thing in the sniping community, or just in the community in general, that you know there's negatives to attachments in this game. I say the uh, sniping community specifically because of the fact that losing ADS speed on my M4 ain't really that big of a deal. Losing ADS speed if I'm quick scoping can be mean life or death, especially in a fast time to kill game. So when we go down to the attachments with this gun, uh, we'll talk about the attachments first of all that you use on the AX50 for the best sniper class. Then we'll go more into to your perks. We just cover the secondaries. So with the attachments on this thing, first of all, as far as the weapon perks, sticking with the focus, why do you think that focus is so important as a perk on the sniper uh, in terms of having less flinch and and being able to basically fight off those ray gunners when you're sniping. Why do you think that is so important? Well, flinch in this game is unlike any other game. And in past, like, Call of Duties, we've had perks, like normal perks like toughness, per se, that would help with flinch. But in this game, those don't exist. So you got to use one of your five perks um, for focus, and that's basically toughness like other games because of the flinch on the snipers. You literally will be looking at the sky if you get shot without focus. It's that important. Okay, and as far as uh, other things for around your class setup, I think the majority of a class setup for quick scoping is revolving around speeding up that ADS. So su things such as the stock that you use or the rear grip with the stipled grip, these are all in regards to speeding up that ADS um, as well as the barrel that you will use on your sniper rifle. The only thing that will kind of slow down your ADS will be the seven round mag. So like you said, it has five in each uh, magazine as the normal sniper. Now, if you upgrade that to seven, you have to use one of those attachment slots and you also have to give up a tiny bit of ADS speed. Do you think that speed is noticeable or does it sort of, you know, is it sort of washed to the side when you have three or four other attachments bigging one thing up and then just one thing bringing it down? What do you sort of think about that? That's actually a fantastic question because it is very noticeable. The, the AX50 Amen. Uh, the aim is that they did in general with the snipers are just unlike any other game ever. Like I said, the attachments are so important with sniping. The ADS is so noticeable with every single thing you take off or add on. Like it will get tremendously faster when you add something and 10 times slower when you take something away. And it's kind of just like a player choice thing. Like you can choose to have extra ammo in your sniper, but it'll take away your aim and speed. And you'll probably die a lot more because of it. Just from the aiming speed, you're not going to be able to aim in. You die that fast in this game. So it's really just one of those things you have to choose between. Do you want more ammo? Do you not want to get flinched up and be looking into space? Um, or do you just want to be able to aim in as fast as possible? Yeah, of course, with a class setup, you can't get everything to be perfect or else what would be the point of it? 
but it, it hits even double when there's cons to stuff. It's not just like how it was in other games where, oh, I, if I choose to run my comsec device, I'm missing out on Stimshot. Now it actually hits you where it hurts. So like you said, all the things are noticeable. You still choose to use that extended mags the majority of the time, is that correct? Or does it sort of depend on the map? Uh, obviously with snipers, you having seven to five, it doesn't sound like a lot just to someone that's just a casual player. But if your goal or your job is to go out there and kill four people in a row and get a quad feed, or to quick scope and hit three people in the head in a row, though that amount of bullets can, can actually make a difference, especially if maybe you start off a streak by missing a couple of shots, and then, oh my goodness, five people come around the corner. If you don't have extended mags, you really don't even have a chance at getting that clip. You're going to have to make that clip something with snipers as well as pistols. So, uh, like I said, with each of these different speeds that can be tested, and every time you adjust your attachments, definitely go into a combat training. Get used to that speed because timing is so important on snipers. With the extended mags, for you, a player that likes to go for kill feeds, is it basically just a, a write-off where you're taking it almost every time? Or will it depend on a map or scenario? Is there times where you just say, you know what, screw the extended mags, I want my weapon to scope in it as fast as possible, and it's not worth it to me? That's actually a, another fantastic question. I do change um, whether or not I have extended mag or not, depending what map I'm on. Let's say it's like a bigger map, uh, I don't really care about aiming in fast or not because I'm just going to be shooting people from far distance so I just want the extra ammo count but if it's like a shorter map I'm going to be finding people really close to me really fast and I have to be able to get them out of my way and kill them so I'm going to be wanting um, just five bullets and as fast aim in as possible so yeah yeah so of course if you're sitting back more if you're you know playing a ground war on any of those maps uh, it, you're really not going to notice too much if, unless you're trying to rush in there the actual slowdown of the speed because you're probably going to be hard scoping different objective points or things like that. Now, if you were to, like you said, swap that out, take away that extended mags and rock with the traditional five, let's say you're playing headquarters on a smaller map, what would you put in terms of a, a, an, in its place? We already have the barrel for aiming in faster. We have your rear grip stipled, which helps with aiming in faster and firing the weapon quicker. You have, of course, your stock with the uh, stin guard arms and then focus, which is very important for snipers. Now, if you take away that extended mags, do you know what you would take as your uh, next fifth attachment for mixing it up and maybe going for, let's say you're playing a headquarters and you're sticking with uh, a five round magazine. What would you take in, in replacement of extended magazines? Well, they actually did a really good job in this game with the, with the ADS. There's four, I think four, yeah, four total um, uh, like attachments, I guess, like the barrel, the rear grip stock and then it's lasers so they had four separate things to increase the ads so like if you take one away it comes slower if you add one it gets quicker so i definitely add laser laser actually does a lot and uh it's kind of cool because it helps like with your aiming um especially with hip firing um, which would be a no scope and then when you're actually aiming in your scope it like has like a green dot on them and kind of makes it easier so yeah laser Okay, so laser versus the extended mags is definitely something that can be swapped out. The only thing is when you're doing that, of course, it's changing the speeds, which it takes some adjustment uh, to a high-level sniper like you. It's probably a bit easier, but like I said, adjusting and getting that timing is probably the most important part of this game, and that's why you'll see a lot of snipers talking about this attachment or that attachment, changing their minds about them every single second because it really comes down to just personal preference and what you're comfortable with. A lot of this is timing, and if you have the good timing with two things that slow you down that might actually make you better than other things that make you faster if that's what you're used to of course in general being as quick as possible to the point especially in a fast time to kill game like this is very very important and as far as the perks that you go with in, on this class setup i think the perks are very fairly self-explanatory on like a sniper class setup eod high alert and battle hardened is usually what i see most of the best sniper class setups containing eod of course is basically flat jacket where in a game where claymores are absolutely ridiculous and grenades are flying everywhere EOD is uh, clearly a great choice for that fir first perk one battle harden is essentially the same thing on the uh, tactical side which being tack mass keeps you away from getting flashed and, and other things around that nature and then you have high alert as far as that second perk now this is very interesting to me because high alert sort of allows you to be notified when players are getting ready to take you out and this is something that's interesting as a, I want to get a sniper's perspective 
because as a sniper who plays on a high sensitivity, like you said, with the 12, you're able to, hey, if you know someone's aiming at you, you can kind of maybe turn onto a target and snap onto that target a little bit quicker with because it's obviously a one shot, one kill elimination than even these fast kill and assault rifles would be. So with that high alert perk, do you find that being very helpful? And what do you look out for with that? When you get that alert, what are your first sort of reactions? Well, even if I'm using like an assault rifle or something, I think high alert is a necessity with this game and the thousands of windows and doorways and head glitches. It's just nice to know when somebody's about to kill you, especially with the, the high person game modes and stuff like that. Like if I'm just out in the open or if I'm just in a enclosed space and somebody from far away is looking at me, it's just nice to know that that's happening and I can snap onto them. I find it actually amazing that that um, perk is in the game because I have had so many clips where I'll have like three kills up and then I'll be looking and I'm like, where is he? And then my screen will just bright up yellow and, I'm, and I just turn around and destroy him. So yeah, high alert's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Especially in a fast time to kill game, like you say, getting that alert it gives you just even that if it's that split millisecond can could really make the difference even on a regular gun like you say i think really with that second perk slot and the first perk slot they're pretty competitive there's a lot of good choices uh, i definitely like high alert i need to probably use it more on certain class setups and then with that thir third perk slot i think the third perk slot is probably the i mean it's traditionally been the weakest in call of duty history and it's same it is the same in this game that's sort of how it's always been set up perk one and two are very important perk three is still very important but your options it's sort of like, hey, if I'm missing any of these, it won't really be a, as big of a game breaker uh, compared to perk one and two. Anyway, that's what we have as far as the best class setup and as far as how to quickscope better. Now, in terms of getting feeds, getting, let's say you're sniping, you're quickscoping, mainly your goal from that is two things, right? Have fun, hit clips, and get some fun gameplays. What would you recommend? Now, ground war is something that obviously is great for sniping for people that like more of a traditional sniping sense of like a battlefield, uh, sitting back, maybe hard scoping. I mean, there's still great ways to quickscope in ground war, but if you're looking into a traditional Call of Duty, what we're used to, which what we're used to is six v6 and well 9v9 which used to be called ground war now has sort of become 10v10 domination or 10v10 tdm uh what do you look for like what are your best map and mode combos in terms of hitting the most amount of clips or where you think quick scoping is the most effective for you uh on the 6v6 maps that they added i think are some of my favorites the 10v10 ones are okay especially the bridge one uh, the bridge map, I'm not sure what it's called. It's like Euphrates Bridge or something like that. Uh, it's literally a fantastic map for sniping. You literally can go up top or stay in the back and just pick people off one by one. It's one of the best sniping maps they've ever brought up. Kind of reminds me of World War II Gustav Cannon in a sense where you can just stay up there the entire map and just destroy kids. But uh, for like 6v6 maps, pick a deli, uh, Hackney Yard. Uh, Azir Cave, those are all just really close quarter, fantastic sniping maps, especially if you're going for like kill feeds and stuff and you have your ADS maxed out. Oh man, it's just great. Mm -hmm. And with the, those are some good maps for 6v6. And with the modes, uh, what do you stick to? Is it maybe like domination, headquarters? I mean, honestly, this game, it's kind of weird where they have like, 20 or 30 different optic sites that you can pick from but on the other end they don't really have too many different game mode options are you sticking mainly with you know traditional dom headquarters you know normal stuff like that for hitting your quad feed uh yeah i i normally prefer headquarters especially in a game like this where camping is so like just a part of people's way of playing i'm not really sure i'm going for it, but it's just natural to camp in this game with how many windows and uh, just spaces there are to camp. So uh, I definitely think headquarters with like an incentivized, you know, place for them to go to capture the headquarters makes them come to me. Um, much easier kills than like if I was saying TDM and they're just like camping in a building waiting for kills. Um, but like you said with the sites, that's definitely something good to bring up because um, I personally believe that the regular scope that they have on all the snipers are really good. Um, I really think that the reg scope is your your go-to bet, uh, any of the ACOGs or something like that, they they really don't make that much of a difference. If anything, they kind of hinder you with the way they sway, uh, especially in this game. There's nothing to combat the way that they just sway around and are all wonky. Yeah, so you'd stick mainly with just the normal scope. Of course, that also helps because if you're picking any other scope, you have to give up one of these five attachments that are very helpful. Um, now, whenever I think of ACOG sniping, one thing only comes to my mind, which is COD4 ACOG sniping. Now, it was a little bit, there was some extra benefits to using it in that game, but in terms of like 
quick scoping at more of a closer range like we saw in the first clip of this video on Azir Cave where you're using a completely different scope and most of those uh, kills that you were getting were up close and personal which not necessarily that that is an up close and personal map but when you're in the cave of course it's going to be like that. Do you think that up close definitely the, there's other sites that would be better and what about at range um, like in terms of thermal sites in this game I know they changed the way that that works or is it just normally sticking with the normal scope throughout 90% of scenarios? Uh, yeah, I think most of your scenarios you should definitely stick with the regular scope. Um, in that first clip, actually, that was the uh, the lever action sniper, which doesn't have like a, a regular scope. It's iron sight along with the car. So for those, they, there is a sniper scope, which is one of one of the attachments you can throw on. Uh, I think you get it like around level 30 or something like that um, on your weapon level up. But regarding like thermal in this game, what we found like all the snipers is that everything is really bright. Uh, for some reason, like, when you use thermal, so, like, it doesn't really help you that much. Like, uh, I guess maybe on some of the darker maps, thermal would work, but I'm pretty sure you can't even see through smoke with thermal, so it doesn't even really make sense why they added it. Yeah, that was, that was the big change that they've been talking about a lot, and that, of course is a controversial change a lot of stuff in this game it's just like you know with the mini map with the red dots not popping up with that change to do a compass a lot of stuff in this game that we have as call of duty fans we kind of have to relearn uh for modern warfare and the last point i want to make is definitely interesting how you said that the bridge is one of the best maps for sniping that's why i think sniping is going to be very popular in this game because that is a map that personally as a raid gunner i really don't like that map but i obviously can see the benefit to sniping on that map just like how gustav can and worked in World War II and that encourages players like myself to pick up more of a sniper and definitely learn and get into it because not only is sniping a uh, fun and, and you know mainly it's if you're using it on a 6v6 map it's probably not your best bet you don't see pro players pulling it you don't see skump pulling out the quick scoping in a 6v6 in, or 4v4 scenario or, or whatever it is but if you're playing on bigger maps like that hey if you pick, pick up with a sniper and especially with the overkill perk one you can be swapping out your EOD for overkill and you can be using that and you can actually stack streaks which of course once you get streaks maybe even cha uh, chaining them together with kill chain and perk 2 which changes your kill streaks to work how they did in modern warfare 2 where they stack up if you get a predator missile that gets you two kills that would bring you to your harrier that's the way that that can change things up i can definitely see that being effective where maybe you go on a streak you get four nice snipes on the bridge map you switch over to your ar you get another couple kills and boom you're off to the races with streaks which obviously on the open wide open big maps that are good for sniping they're also very very good for streaks so that's about it that's the last point i wanted to make i think this was a pretty in-depth video i know this game is brand new and of course things are going to change through life cycle patch notes are going to come out all that sort of stuff but i think this video should help you guys out with just in terms of general getting used to quick scoping on this game what you should focus on what you should practice and the best weapons and class setups to use thank you so much for doing this video man i really did appreciate it i hope you had fun and i hope this can help some people out for sure definitely check out arkin's channel link in the description i can't stress it enough this guy if you like sniping content there's no like what are you doing click it click it and subscribe there's no reason not to uh there's just i you, you just got to do it you got to do it uh thanks for watching though uh i appreciate you coming on and doing this interview with me talking about quick scoping getting someone that definitely knows their stuff a little bit more than me or definitely a lot more than me and then having me to ask these questions i, th I think this worked out quite well uh, i appreciate anything you want to say uh, as a sayonara or an outro uh that's it from me <laughs> Thanks for having me, man. I had, a, I had a really good time coming on. You're, you're a fucking great guy. Um, disgusting on the sticks. That's all I got to say. Like the video. <laughs> like the video, man. Check out his channel. All right. We're out. Peace. Peace.